Green is an easy color to come by in St. Paul today as the St. Paddy's Day tradition continues this afternoon. But the Sioux will be seeing red as Bucky tries to dampen the Irish spirit. The first ticket to the championship game is punched this afternoon and it comes your way next on FSN. Day, downtown St. Paul, all you need for a really good time. Throw in five teams from the WCHA, and you've got the finest brew available. The Grand Marshals of this year's Final Five Parade are five hot goaltenders. Bobby Geffert, thus far the grandest of them all, 36 saves was more than enough to lead St. Cloud St. over Minnesota Duluth last night. Today, as longtime rivals meet for the 20th time in the WCHA playoff, eyes once again will be on the tenders, two of whom are among the top 10 in the nation. It's the first semifinal game of the 2006 Red Baron WCHA Final Five. Number nine, North Dakota against number two, Wisconsin, live on FSN. Hi again, everyone, along with Doug Hoog, I'm Frank Mazzocco. Great rivalries, this one goes back a long way, Doug. How bitter is the rivalry? Well, Frank, two things they have in common. They both have, I tell you, they both have good goaltending, but, and they all both have, uh, oh, how am I doing here? Not so good. We're gonna start over here, but you know what they have in common? is hockey, otherwise, nothing in common. These two goaltenders among the best of the nation, Jordan Parisi and Brian Elliott, both juniors, a 168 goals against average for Brian Elliott, Doug. He has been the backbone of this Wisconsin team. Well, he sure has been that. Everybody thought he was gonna be good, and he's lived up to that, no question about it. He skates very well in front of that net. He moves his feet very well, uses his glove. Anything you need, he can do. Jordan Parisi, on the other hand, a junior, 23-year-old junior from Faribault, Minnesota, a big game goaltender with three shutouts in his last five games. Well, while the two schools have goaltending similarities, their goal production comes from opposite ends of the calendar, so to speak. The fighting Sioux Doug rely on one of the country's best freshman classes to get their goal production. Now they got some nice freshmen, Dave, Oshie, no question about Taylor. A lot of guys that can help put the puck in the net and also defend. One of the best around. While the Fighting Sioux get 70% of their production from their underclassmen, including T.J. Oshie and the draft eligible Jonathan Cage, the Badgers get 63% of their scoring from their upperclassmen. Robbie Earl is eighth in the country. John Gilbert, sixth in the WCHA among defensemen. North Dakota coach Dave Haxtell talks about this time of the year and being ready to play one another yet again. We know the opposition very well. They know us very well. I don't think there's going to be a lot of surprises. You know, it's really a matter of going out and, and executing uh, your game and the way that, uh, that you play it. For the Fighting Sioux, their 13th trip to the WCHA Final Five. They last won it in 2000. The Badgers' 15th trip, they last won it in 1998. Welcome back to the Excel Energy Center, downtown St. Paul, and this is semi-final Friday. Two games today, this afternoon's tilt, Wisconsin, North Dakota tonight. It'll be the number one seed, University of Minnesota, against St. Cloud State, which won the play-in game last night over Minnesota Duluth. Our Wells Fargo starting goaltenders, you had a brief look at the gentleman earlier, Jordan Parisi, known as a big game goaltender. And Doug, we saw his stats a little bit earlier, how his um, numbers just get tinier and tinier in the playoffs. He uh, rises to the occasion. Brian Elliott, we called him the cornerstone of the Wisconsin Badgers. He was a longtime Hobie Baker favorite until he was injured, missed about a half dozen games or more. And during that slump, the Badgers sagged a little bit. It took Elliott a couple of games to get back to full strength. They tell us now, and from what we've seen in some video, he's back. Let's turn now to the Star Tribune scouting report, Coach Woog. Well, Wisconsin's got to create some offense. It means score some goals. North Dakota, they've been playing very aggressively, but they've got to control it. Both teams, you know what? The best goalie wins, and this could be a great duel. Yes, those uh, North Dakota fighting Sioux have had a propensity to parade to the penalty box. Our referee tonight is Todd Anderson. Butch Mousseau and Tim Swader are the assistant referees. Let's look at the lines through Anderson windows. 
<laughs> oh, that's good, clear sight. Earl, Pavelski, Burris, Dudre, Dowell, and McMurchie. That's the ones you got to be concerned about here. We go to the second group here. We go to UND. And you'll see that Spirico, Zajac, and Oshi, along with Duncan, Taze, and Porter, will probably create the most offense for the Sioux. Talented offense against a very talented and diligent defensive unit. And our first semifinal game of the day is underway as Jeff Likens for the Badgers plays it into North Dakota territory. Here's Robbie Earl trying to get it back behind the net. That was uh, broken up and now back to center. And into Wisconsin territory. Rastislav Spirko, first man of the puck, and he'll control it all the way back to the blue line. Gets a little help there from Zach Jones to keep it alive. Here's T.J. Oshie, the first-round draft pick of St. Louis last summer, playing it in deeper. Badgers, Kyle Kluber-Tans in the corner, trying to take it away, but the fighting Sioux hold on to it. Matt's may be shooting. This gets deflected, and just 40 seconds into the period, we have our first stoppage. Tail of the tape. Well, you'll see numbers that are very close, but if you look at them very closely, you'll see a tad more defensive advantage to the Wisconsin Badgers, particularly in goals against average, and in the penalty kill. Otherwise, pretty darn close. Wow. Both teams with 25 wins. Drop of the puck, good draw to the Sioux. Brian Lee plays it to the corner. Jonathan Taves digging for it. And as it's centered, the Badgers take it away to the right side. Ryan McMurchy, and I think we lost the puck, did we not? Did. Yes, we did. Boy, Taylor Chorney really took that rush nicely. He didn't give any lines away. He didn't give the red line away. Didn't give the blue line away. You know what happened? That puck got deflected. It's back to four. was trying to get it into the, into the offensive end. Couldn't get there. Nice play by the freshman Chorney. Chorney part of this large freshman class from Edina, Minnesota, and played his junior hockey in Sioux Falls. And now yet another whistle, I think, on a delayed offside here. Well, we're going to have an icing. Brian Lee didn't get the Good connection on the, on the shot there, or the pass, but the neutral zone. Brian Lee, another freshman, Frank. We talked about the youth at the beginning of the program here. This is a team that started late, but they are awfully young. Brian Lee, Matt Watkins, Ryan Duncan, Brad Miller, Andrew Kozak, Jonathan Taves, TJ Oshie. Zach Jones, wait, there's more. Taylor Chorney, Joe Finley. Yeah, and probably the manager. <laughs> and Coach Dave Haxtall in his second year. Yeah. A near rookie. Out at center ice, Tom Gilbert had it for a moment, was able to knock the puck down. It's back to center again. Gilbert trying to get in the way of a pass. Oh, and there'll be a hooking penalty. It interferes there as Taves went for the puck. He, someone got a hook on him, and Todd Anderson that was the easy one to spot. Yeah, McMurchy, big, strong, physical player, but wasn't moving his feet at the up. It's a blue line. His defensive blue line just needs to reach out and grab. Taste has been red hot. He's just absolutely been blistering hot here right, in the last month. He is, he is a okay. special player. I think he's still 17. He won't be 18 before the season's over. So he's got a terrific future. The yes. numbers back at the line. Here's Brian Lee. Lee works it back across for Chorney. The one-timer to Oshi didn't work. He'll take it center point, whips it down low. Great centering pass for Spearco, and he couldn't quite tee it up. A great pass from Tra uh, Travis Zajac. Taylor Chorney again shooting, and the deflection by Zajac hits the glass and comes right back to the fighting Sue. Chorney to Tate. Chorney's one-timer. Big save by Brian Elliott, and he holds on. Well, Zajac was planted in the front, little tic-tac-toe playing with Chorney and Oshi on the left side. And they're setting up Big Hammer. Didn't go in. Nice save by the goaltender, Elliot. That was really his best so far. A little tic-tac-toe coming right here. Boom. This is Taylor with a lot of swing of that stick. Zajax in front, but there is no rebound. Minute 20 left on that penalty for hooking. There's maybe throwing it back into the corner. And as they drive it around, just stepping up Kyle Radke. And puck played with a glove hand. In the offensive zone, he cannot do it. If it's in your end and if it gets completed in your end, no problem. Puck will come outside the blue line. It's, it's a, a nice puck zone. movement early in the game here, Doug. Nice puck movement on the power play. Yeah, it has. And Badger has not touched the puck, I don't think. That's how good it's been. Yeah, here they win the faceoff, and they're able to shoot it down. Josh Angle dumped it down the rink. Parisi leaves it behind the net. Here's Matt Smaby again. He's in his junior year and a big defenseman at 6'5". 
The center ice caves and it's offside at the line and the whistle yet again. How many stoppages have we had? We've only played two minutes, 26 seconds. Well, there's been some errant pass, probably a little jitters going on down there, but it's maybe getting back to maybe. I tell you, when you walk around him, you can lose your breath. It's, it's, yeah. He's a load. He's a monument. Eight stoppages already, Larry Robertson tells us. And the draw again won by the Badgers, and that allows them to touch the puck. This time, Jeff Likens throws it down the rink. Lee plays it right back across. He'll get a pass behind the net, and now start it out. Still plenty of time. 40 seconds on the power play. To the right side, Taves will bring it in. He can dance in his shot, and a nice defensive play by Josh Angle, who nearly got undressed, but he recovered just in time. Well, he's got one, one pants leg on and one off, I think, Frank. And there he showed you all he needed one leg to play D. Now Lee back at the line, still on the fighting suit power play. Spirko waiting, shooting for a deflection, and that was the knocked away to Lee at the point. Taves off the left wing boards. Down low to Zajac. Right in front for a one-timer. And Taves tries to stuff it in a second time. And the Badgers got lucky there. Oh. Short-handed three on two. They bring it to center. And a big hit on the near side. Here's Chorney trying to get rid of it. The penalty to McMurchie is over. And now Wisconsin will look for its first offense of the game. Nice check by Spirko as he took McMurchie out. And the fighting suit is center, but too far for Jonathan Taves. That power play was so long, Doug, I think they had their first unit out twice. Well, it was nice puck movements and good opportunities. Elliott was good, and he was lucky. I think that one went right through his legs off the backside. Might have even hit the pipe. Boy, when you're good and lucky, you're having a great day. Here's Ryland, Ryland Kite to play it behind the net. And now Ben Street for the Badgers. McMurchie puts it right in front, and the fighting Sue got lucky. That one didn't go off a skate. Little luck at either end. Andrew Kozak gains the zone by dumping it in. Ryland Kite to the corner. Now a check thrown by Kozak. Badgers try to work it ahead and do to center. Jack Skilly pulls up and shoots a nice save by Jordan Parisi. That's the first Wisconsin shot on goal of the hockey game. Down at the other end, Brian Elliott busy, particularly during the power play. Oh boy, that puck just looked like, I thought it hit the pipe, but it just kind of went over. A little Texas League single over the gloves, all it was. Oh, it did hit the pipe. Better look from our McDonald's overhead camera. Fighting Sue again, bring it in, and a long shot by Ryan Duncan blocks. From center, long, high, rising shot. Ross Carlson, and it's stopped by Parisi, and then uh, maybe incidental contact at the side of the net. Well, this line here, Ross Carlson, Ben Street, and Jack Skilly have really been good. In fact, some of the coaches have told me that Ben Street may have been their best player, the freshman here, the last two weekends. One against St. Cloud, next one against Michigan Tech. So they get some scoring. They get 29 goals out of that group. The third line for the Sioux, Kozik, Watkins, and Kai, they only have 11, so that could be a difference maker. A lot of offense out now for the Wisconsin Badgers with the Pavelski line. Robbie Earl on the left, Adam Burrish on the right. Here comes T.J. Oshie for the Fighting Sioux. Puts it in the crease, and Elliott is there to cover up. That'll be one of the easier saves he'll make tonight. Yeah, and he'll make a lot of them, too, I think. The Sioux, one thing about the Sioux, they attack. There's, there's no laying back. They just are aggressive players. It's fun to watch them because they do attack. Badgers play a little more defensive. I should say, actually, quite a bit more defensively in, in the mindset. So it's too look. Did David Haskell. Man, nice young guy. Nice good coach, too. Second year coach Mike Eves in his fourth year for the University of Wisconsin. Here's Matt maybe shot. That's off a leg. Brad Miller shooting it around. In the corner, Mike Perfect, the fourth line out there for the uh, University of North Dakota. And into fighting Sioux territory. Andy Lakari, first man of the puck, that pretty much let him get there all by himself, or Nick Lakari, beg your pardon. Pass gets deflected. And Parisi will stop it for Matt Smaby once more. Smaby out of the city of Minneapolis. He was a, a Southwest High School player, I think, Frank. He decided to go down to Shattuck. That's, I think that was the uh, history there. There's a rush toward the net by Andrew Jodry. Now Jake McDowell, or Jake Dowell, and 
in the slot. McMurtry plays it quickly to the line. Lubertans a shot. Nice block out front by Smaby. And North Dakota with com some control as the tempo slows down a little bit. Bouncing puck comes loose to Brad Miller. And dumped into Badger territory in the middle of a line change. Everybody has to be careful there. Oh, Matt Frank. Watkins. Well, you're right, too. And that could have been one right there. There's Brian Lee back to get it. Could have been a too many men in the ice, depending on what the referee wanted to call. That's, to me, that's one of the tougher penalties to call. Up the middle, a shot comes down off the glass. It hit Parisi, but it will not go in. Kluvertans, high. Shot that thing on the one-timer. Moved in at a high slot. Nice idea. But when he shot the puck, it was a Nassau shot. Is he kissing his helmet? I'm not sure. Maybe he should be. There it is. That thing was right. Hello. Oh. Well, you know, you got to have some luck, too. <laughs> there, that could have been bad luck. It ends up, I think you got to call it good luck because nothing happened. What a great shot. <laughs> Again, from the McDonald's overhead camera. And Charney came flying through like it was a fumble. He was going to take care of that little biscuit himself. Ben Street, freshman from British Columbia, in for this faceoff against Chris Porter. Who's been around quite a while? Yeah, that's just in his like, junior year. Seems like he was there before the new Engelstead was around. Taylor Chorney, I think he was trying to hit Taves, but they missed fire. Yeah. Seventy percent of the Fighting Sioux offense coming from their freshman class, which leads all classes in the WCHA. 162 points. So if you take four classes, ten teams, it's 40 classes. That's pretty good for the freshmen to be leading. Yeah, and it's there's so many good freshmen. Like most of them right now, are, or at least the forwards have a little advantage because it's a little bit easier to be young and be good. 13th straight game for Jordan Parisi. We told you he's got three shutouts in his last five. Michigan Tech, Minnesota State among the teams that he has shut out. See, it's easier to play forward. Let's finish that up. Playing D as a freshman is tough. Playing goalie is tough. Forward's the easiest position. That's why you're seeing better forwards than D right now. That pass intended for Ross Carlson. I don't know if he couldn't get to it or was checked, but it's icing against the University of Wisconsin. Game's got kind of a funny flow to it or, or no flow. I'm not sure exactly how to describe it. When they get into the zone, either team, they seem to be able to stay in the zone pretty well, but there isn't much up and down. It's, it's a great transition yet. In other words, you don't, I think Wisconsin would like to keep it that way. Yeah. They'd like to keep it under control. Limit great rushes or outman rushes by the Sioux who have, you know, in a sense, probably more skill up front. Back to center ice and TJ Oshie is trapped pretty good at the line, but still gets it to his line mate Travis Zajac. The ever working Travis Zajac. Naro Spirko, who has one of the great college hockey names, Rostislav yeah. Spirko. He's getting up to the penalty minutes, though, Frank. He's got six penalties this, in his career. <laughs> And most of those were in the last couple yeah, of months, they weren't they? they? Exactly, <laughs> at zero in about November. Robbie Earl gains the zone, then he took a thundering check from Smaby, who's been very involved in the play for the Fighting Sioux here in the first half of this period. Long shot gets deflected for a goal! Perfectly played. They've had few shots on goal, and I think Pavelski gets the tip in. Kubikatz got it off, I believe. The right-handed point guy fired that biscuit. Well, that's a big goal for the, for the red and white because they like to stay ahead. Not very good from behind. Oh, a nice oh, tip. Man. Picked it right out of the air. Kowalski, a throwback. And I say that in a positive way. He can play the game. He's got good hockey sense, knows where to be. Great vision. And he's a doggone good player. There's just no question. But Clippertons does a good job of getting it through. Tough one to save. You well, know, not only did that change the, uh, the vertical plane of the puck, but it changed it to left to right. A double issue there for Parisi, and Pavelski gets his 20th goal of the season at 7.43. That was like one of those golf greens that moved both ways. Clover Tans thus far gets the only assist on that goal, 7 minutes and 43, and as we say that now, they have added Adam Burrish. So a double assist on Wisconsin's first goal and the game's first goal. It doesn't surprise me that line would be the one. They've got 47 goals, certainly a long way ahead of the next line from any Badgers group. From the front of the net, it's batted away by Kyle Ratke. Delayed penalty coming up here on the uh, North Dakota Fighting Sioux. Todd Anderson spotted something 
around the net. It's going to be a cross check and already with the lead on the goal by Pavelski. The Badgers will have a chance to make it 2-0 when we come back. Carsoup.com is the ultimate automotive power tool for the serious buyer. Carsoup is designed to help you find the lowest prices on local vehicles from local dealers with more ways to search, shop, and save today. All wrapped up in one comprehensive, easy-to-use site. Think of Carsoup as your key to a better buy. Joe Finley gets a minor penalty for cross-checking. I thought it was away from the play a bit, and perhaps a needless penalty. It gets the Badgers, who are already up one nothing. A chance in the power play. This one gets deflected, hits the netting. Tria Orthopedic will tell you exactly who's hot, and perhaps a good thing right now. It's the Fighting Sioux penalty killers, who have given up only one in the last five games. That's an efficiency of 96%. A nice job by Andrew Judry. He just slid right down from the weak side point. He's a forward playing D on this power play. Tom Gilbert throws it to the corner. They try to get it back to him, but can't. And Spirko throws it down the rink, and then all four penalty killers go off for the fighting Sioux. Judry was injured, didn't play for about two weeks. Three weeks came back. And, you know, he's 80% according to Dr. Landry, but 80% the orthopedic say, hey, you can go with 80%. Joe Pavelski, the leading power play scorer, as Robbie Earl had the last good chance. Pavelski with nine to lead the Badgers by a considerable margin. Next closest player has six. Here's Gilbert playing it down low. Pavelski goes up the middle, and Earl tips it into the corner. Chorney on the loose puck gets it out of there in a hurry. Nice puck movement by both units here. Green and White, North Dakota had their power play, moved the puck. The Badgers are moving it pretty well. Come back here now with the second group. Badgers cross rink at center. Lakari throwing it in. Parisi paddles it around. Knocked down by Ross Carlson. Carlson gets it again. Throws it across. Jack Skilly. Klubertans. Skilly. Klubertans oh. hits the pipe. Oh, you can hear how cleanly he hit that one. A bell ringer. Again, Klubertans gets the puck through. He did it on the goal. He gets it through on that one. Not a foolish shot, but one that had eyes. Only it ran itself right into the pipe. Klubertans, long outlet pass right to the line. Brought in by Skilly. Great young freshman out of Wisconsin. Played with the National Development Program in Ann Arbor. Just one shot on goal, one pipe for the Badgers. And their power play. Great. Nice job by Chris Porter to gain the zone. Here's a quick centering pass by Perkbeck. It comes back to the point for a shot. Lee's shot was blocked. And a nice defensive job, and then what a hit by Lee. Oh, -ho. Ben Street paid the price for hauling that one up the rink. I like Ben Street, and I like Jack oh. Skilly and that line of Carlson. They're pretty good. Look at Oshi. He's just darting around two guys left in there with one pant leg. Ah! Puck in the scramble, and it's back behind the net as Gilbert throws a check. No doubt why he made the all-rookie team. Ryan Duncan, and now to McMurchy for the Badgers, and to center, Chorney couldn't control. It bounced right to Jake Dowell, right in front, a shot and a goal! Jake Dowell. Andy Brandt coming down the middle. Wow. Nice job by the red and white. It's Clover Tanson shot out the pipe. I don't know if Street got a piece of that one or not. Here's a goal. Nice play here by Dow. Andy Brandt's first goal of the season. Oh, you got to be kidding me. And his second career goal. This is 86 game. He's a defensive <laughs> specialist, turn offensive star. He did a pretty good leap there for a guy who's only got two. He got that practice when they played that game at Lambeau. Here it's tipped into the corner. McDowell goes, or Dowell goes after it. Why am I keep thinking of Randy McDowell? I don't know, but Jake Dowell. And it lobs and bounces into Badger territory. Now a tough hill to climb for the Fighting Sioux. They certainly have the offensive power, but down 2 0 in the first period makes life just a little bit miserable. Well, it is if you're a Sioux fan, but don't give up. The Sioux have lots of energy. They've got some forwards they can play. They had their opportunities as well. Dowell, the only assist on the goal. 11.05 the time. Well, nice uh, ramp. I mean, that, 
That's he's been at a lot of practices, Frank, and that's where he scored his goals. They haven't been in games. Be able to come out here tonight this afternoon and pull it on the board. It's got to be a great feeling for that young guy. Likens plays it to the corner. Now Pavelski in there pushing. Spirko gets a piece of it. Oh, she, you know, the puck wouldn't come to him. Now he's back to get it. And a collision with Pavelski. Zajac. Scores from Spirko. Wisconsin. His first goal of the season, well. number 21. Pavelski again. Oh, is Joe Pavelski doing a job in the corner? Back to the point. Lee shot deflected a couple of times. It goes wide. And here's Adam Burst, the captain of this Wisconsin team, throwing it ahead. Earl will go after a loose puck. They've waved off the icing because Lee could have and maybe did play it out at center. Chorney now with the outlet. TJ Oshie. He'll dump it in, and this line will finally go off on a chain. Ryan Duncan after the puck. Boy, that was a smart dump, Frank. Oshie come down, threw it in the corner, and threw it so Duncan could actually pick up the puck on the on the backboard. Just intelligent play. Gilbert throws it in the zone. Right there is Duncan again. And he's pretty well trapped and covered by Ben Street. Street got knocked down but made the play ahead. And this shot goes uh, into the corner. Not picked up by Lee Marvin. And he does a 360 before he comes ahead. Right side but the pass is behind Chris Porter. Now back out at center. Way too high for Kyle Radke. No icing. Boy, that was close down there. Marvin at center ran into a problem. Trailing the play, here's Brad Miller. And uh, Brian Elliott makes the save. Well, if you only have two goals in your career, you better be ready to celebrate. That day will come. Andy Brand does it well. Our Dodge key stat around the cornerstone of the Badgers, Brian Elliott against ranked opponents this year, hasn't lost. Oh, How stingy can you be there? 124 goals against against ranked opponents. That's why he hasn't lost. 1.24. Oh. That's uh, you know I can see numbers like that when you're playing the eighth and ninth yeah. place teams. There he covers up. I watched him play when he came back. He played uh, against Mankato, caught both those games on the on the TV, and he struggled. Didn't quite look himself, but he's got himself back together. You know that was the concern is he played so well to begin with then went on the break with the injury would he come back and, and get it going well he didn't get it going right away but now he's got it full throttle. Here's Charney and I nice say by Elliott that, that was tougher than it looked. Oh well, sure it changed direction it was going one way and came back inside. There's Parisi having a little problem with that one and in on the four check is A.J. Dagenhart. Brant. Throwing it around. Forced ahead by Perfect, but not enough to get it in the zone. Dagenhart breaking loose. Goes to his backhand and then ran into one more check and finally lost it. Perfect for the fight. Sue took a bump there from Jodry. Now Lee quickly ahead and Miller tips it down the rink. Kluber Tan's first man to it. Zajac giving chase. McMurchie, nice outlet pass right under the stick of Jodry, who gains the zone. Trying to get around Zach Jones, it won't work. Spirko knocks it loose. Dowell is there. Jones with a hit. But, uh, Dagenhart tied up, or actually McMurchie. But, uh, I thought that Jones, he's kind of aggressive with that stick. He may pay before this is over. Spirko right up the middle for Oshi, but there were too many Badgers there. He couldn't get that shot through McMurchie. Oshi playing it right back in. These guys are relentless. What a wonderful line. Spirko, Zajac, and Oshi. Well, you got a little bit of everything, and you got a wonderful centerman, and you got Oshi who just constantly works. And Spirko's so great with the puck. He's got great vision. That is a tough line to play against. And I don't think out of the uh, out of the six skates that are up there, that any one of them, there's, there's never five of them that are stopped. No, they're always at the, at the sharpening machine at wall between periods. Battle by Chris Porter, but couldn't control it on the far side. Bounds loose at center. Duncan whacks at it. And then flipped into the zone by Adam Burrish. Burrish gives chase, but Parisi got it away. Now Burrish with a hit. Oh, they play it right up the middle. Right under the stick of Pavelski. That was number three. Yeah. Because goaltender could not handle that one. 
And another whack by Burris. The fighting Sue in a bit of a spot. Finally whip it down the rink. And they finally call it icing. Well, let's see. I believe it was St. Paddy's Day. I believe it was St. Paul. And the Fighting Sioux came up with a play-in game victory over the Wisconsin Badgers, 3-2. Bucky, two goals up now in avenging this loss. Hold the kid away. Yeah, and Fabian got hot. Reese got hot. That was a really a good run by a team that, uh, in a sense, over I thought, last year, which is a good thing. There's Lee. And comes back for the puck. Finds Kipe. Missing on that pass to Kozak. And a loose puck. And then there'll be a Wisconsin penalty. Hustle there by Matt Watkins. Out of this third line, they came up ice with some pressure. And I think drew that penalty. I think so. And I think it's Olinger that's going to go. The Fighting Sioux could use one here. Still early in the game, but they're down by two. Madison native Matt Olinger hooking the penalty and it puts the Fighting Sioux on their second power play of the game and we have another puck that hits the netting. It's really fun to watch some of these guys who've got the high-end talent. O.C. for example, Taze Birkoff. O.C. was going to get hit as the puck was turning through the puck down to him. He just let it go right on by him down so another Sioux player could take it. But just the vision that they have, it's so much fun to watch. The hockey sense, terrific. They spread their power play goals around pretty well, too. Oshie with nine, Taves with eight, Zajac with seven. All three of those numbers in their own are impressive. And then when you combine it, it becomes even more potent. Ryan Lee behind his own net. Boy, they have relied on him a lot. Brian Lee and just a freshman. I noticed in this game so far, he's become much more physical than he was early in the year. He's got his legs underneath him right now. Just a year ago, a Mr. Hockey in the state of Minnesota out of the high school ranks at a Moorhead. Oh, 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 what a pass. Oh, oh, oh. Lee, and it's kicked away by Elliott. I think we'll see that one again. You normally don't like that as a coach. That <laughs> behind the back spinner one, but hey, he was right on the money. Parisi trying to catch the Badgers in a line change. Spierko gets it in. Likens dumps it right back out. Put it on the tape to tape beside. <laughs> We're pushing Ozzy today, but I'll tell you, he is one of the very fine young talents because he works hard and he's got skill. Nice passing coming up the ring for the fighting suit. Jonathan Taves back to the line. A blast, and it's right on. Big save on Kyle Ratke. Third member of our crew, Anthony LaPanta, standing by at ice level. Well, guys, it's a simple equation for the Wisconsin Badgers when Brian Elliott plays well. They're as good as anybody in the country. And if you look at his numbers over the course of the year, you'll see why. 18-2-2 two two early in the year. A save percentage of 94% before his injury. Was banged around for 17 goals in three games. When he returned, everybody panicked. But, boy, has he looked sharp since. Only two goals in his last four games in sweeps for the Badgers, and he looks razor sharp tonight. I have one question, Mr. Hey, Mazzocco. Hey. Yes, sir. Why didn't he play some games last year? Uh, Elliot? Yeah. I mean, it, I just, that's well, that might be question. for the same reason that Sean Con uh, Shane Connolly didn't play games until he got until Elliot got hurt this year. I think Mike Eves likes to go with one guy and stay with him as long as he can. I agree. I, I don't know. I, agree. I just kind of bring I, it up. Oh, oh, beautiful shot. Great shot by Ryan Duncan. Fighting Sue late in the period on the board. Big boost for them. It's a one goal game. Huge power play goal. Absolutely huge. Momentum maker going into the locker room. Good score again. Keeps them off the three to nothing possibility. Wrist shot on the inside. I don't know why Elliott gave him that much room on the inside. Maybe he didn't see where he was at. Let's take a look at it here. Nice pass inside. Oh, I think he was worried about the weak side too. Nice pass to begin that too by Kyle Ratke. He got that puck right over there. 26. Big goal. 12th goal of the season. Only two seconds left on that power play, Doug. At 18.07, the time of this one. Well, the, you know, maybe, maybe right at the time the penalty expired. Well, I saw Olinger come out after, so he just. Uh, there was a little time left. Could have been more than a couple seconds. 
All right, well, they sort out the official time. Duncan thus far with the goal, and they've given one assist to Ratke. That'd be the right pass. Number 26 pushes it down. Very nice pass to number 16, which is Duncan. Duncan's a little guy, 5'6", 142. I wonder if he, he didn't get a chance to proofread this copy. In North Dakota. Kipe on the faceoff, so cool played around. Number 16, Charlie Duncan. back, back tracking a little bit on it. Big hit by Matt Watkins. Watkins. He came a and long way to throw that. Yeah, yeah, he was. He, he was in Minneapolis. He will go after it. Now giving chase. Rogers, Jack Skilly. Down out of the air at center ice to Porter. Here's Watkins. He'll have to come back for it. Porter helping out. Skilly in there for the Badgers, number 12. So, so is Klubertans. Now Porter. Skilly meets him, knocks him down, but he's Walker right back up. One minute. Oh, oh, behind the goal! From behind the goal line, and I wanted to make sure I saw a red light. This is a tie game. Oh, yes, and it's uh, the Watkins line. Goes that, that crew went in there just battle. I'll tell you, Porter was involved there, too. They worked a little cycle out of the corner. Then they got it back under the goal line. They pushed it out. Now, the goal line's only 11 feet in this ring. Normally, it's 15, so it's a little crowded there. Watch the little play in the corner. Boy, Andy Brandt is one up here, Doug. You'll watch this one sneak through. As Kipe, they got the goal. Brandt. It's his first goal. First career <laughs> goal. I, I told you, he went up to Andy Brandt. Oh, I got you. Brandt just got his second career goal, his first of the season. That gave the Wisconsin a 2-1 lead and another chance for Smirko. And it's right on. We said earlier that the Sioux wouldn't quit. That he's coming back. They're an attacking club. Ryland Kite, his sixth point of the year, his tenth career point. He is a sophomore out of Saskatchewan. Not much of a smile there. Pretty uh, much businesslike. Here's the last shot by Spirko. Yeah, he just got in the pad. I'll tell you what. I think this, the uh, Badgers would like to get out of here without any more damage because the momentum has switched over to the green and white. Wisconsin controlling that faceoff. They're going to wave off the icing here, saying Smaby could have played it. Smaby, Smaby could have, I think. And that's turned over. Earl comes after it. He got bumped, and now from behind the net. Here's Oshie. Zajac stripped of the puck. Very nice defensive play out at center. I think it was it was either Likens or Angle, Doug. Uh, Josh Angle. Yeah. I'm kind of watching Earl. Earl wasn't very happy down there. Giving somebody a little cup. He thought he got in. Obstructed. Oshie dumps it in. This is Angle to go after it. Now here's Gilbert and back for Angle. Down to a couple of seconds, and then this period will come to an end. About as even as it can get. And unofficially, the shots are 13 10 against uh, for, for the Fighting Sioux. But after Wisconsin grabbed the first two goals relatively early, North Dakota two in the last two minutes. Yeah, it was a fun period because Wisconsin got off early, and there's some intensity in this game. This is not a backsliding game. You've got to stand up tall, and I think it's going to give us a good second and third period. Both teams had their chances. Both goalies have been dented more often than they normally get dented. Ladies See how they respond. Welcome these players from the All right, a good opener, a great first period here in this semifinal game between Wisconsin and North Dakota. Anthony LaPanta will take us through the intermission. Welcome back to the XL Energy Center in St. Paul. 2-2 after one between the Sioux and the Badgers. Time for our Mall of America. First intermission here, we were joined by Ryan Duncan. I don't know that we could overstate the importance of your goal to turn the tide in this game. Oh, definitely. I uh, just got lucky. We were at the end of a shift, and uh, I think their penalty was uh, yeah, their penalty was just expiring, and uh, got an open lane to the net, and they've been uh, doing a great job of blocking our shots to the net. And, they, two of their guys went down, and I just took a shot and found the, uh, the empty net there, so it was lucky. It's been a long time since you've seen the Badgers, nearly four months since they visited you back in November. Then Brian Elliott was on top of his game. What was the game plan coming in against him here this weekend? Well, obviously, he's a great goaltender. He uh, picked up a couple of awards yesterday. He's an outstanding goalie. We had trouble scoring on him uh, their first series when they came up to North Dakota there, and uh, 
we definitely wanted to get to him early, get traffic in front of him. But like I said, their team does a great job of uh, blocking the shots, even getting to the net. So we just got to work hard and uh, ca capitalize on our opportunities. Thanks very much, Ryan. Thanks a lot. Ryan Duncan, he had one of the two North Dakota goals here in the first period. The Sioux scored twice in the last two minutes, and we're even after one. More on our first intermission in a moment. Well, no matter how, well, I guess his day's going pretty good, but no matter how bad your anybody else's day might be going, the important thing is how you respond and rebound, and the fighting Sioux rebounded about as well as that guy did, I would yeah, say. Yeah, he did okay. It's over the Sioux that period. What a right. wonderful period, though. It was, and a lot of great clips, a lot of great, great clips. Blumertans fires it in. Pavelski gets the first over the Badgers. The young sophomore does it again. Here we get uh, a nice play by... McDowell, Andy Brandt, and of course McMurchie's involved in that one. So the Sioux, the Sioux are down two to nothing, but they come back with Taze pass. Oh, nice little pass to Radke, and of course this guy here gets his first one. That's Ryan Duncan. And another unexpected guy, Mr. Kite puts the puck in the net with Watkins and Porter assisting. So it's a two to two game. Those two middle goals were just outstanding shots. Two to two on our Red Baron stats after one period of play. Shots are even, so are the scoring chances. Officially, neither team scoring on that power play. The Duncan goal was not a power play goal. Penalties, very few. Face up, dead easy, but the block shots. Lamore in favor of the Wisconsin Badgers. We'll take a break. Our second period face off from St. Paul in a moment. Welcome back to the XL Energy Center in St. Paul. 2-2 after one. We're joined by Wisconsin assistant Marco Siki. Great start for the Badgers. Now you must deal with that momentum swing with late goals for North Dakota. It's been interesting with our team. We haven't handled those uh, situations very well late, uh, lately. And uh, I think that's up to some of our upperclassmen to you know, put their foot down and say, hey, that's got to stop. But you know what? It's a, it's a good start for us. Hey, we have to handle a little adversity. And now let's get back to work. Thanks very much. Thank you. Frank and Doug, back to you. Anthony, thanks. Very good observation yeah. from Mr. Osiki. Well, I'll tell you what, we said in the beginning that uh, the Badgers had to create some offense, and you got to say they did. They got two goals. Yeah. And that's a good start at six if you go the same way through the next two. A little manicuring here by Butch Mousseau, a little extra water. And you imagine going to the hairdresser and saying, Would you give me a manicure? And Mr. Mousseau. I can't imagine so. that at all. <laughs> I think I see that coming. Wisconsin Badgers, their fourth straight appearance here at the WCHA Final Five. And may I correct myself, it's their fifth appearance in the last six years. It's a fourth straight for the Fighting Sioux. Yeah, these it are doesn't matter how you fumble, it's how you recover. <laughs> Get your own ball back, right? <laughs> I know that. Somehow. Whoa, look at that save. Joe Pawalski. Stopped there by Zach Parisi. With Anthony LaPanta and Doug Wug, I'm Frank Mazzacco. Thank you for joining us on the St. Patrick's Day afternoon. Boy, they were downtown in force. I came out of the hotel and <laughs> I thought it was a presidential parade. Of course, they're all Oh, green. Pavelski, they gave it right away, and then Earl pushed his shot wide in the net. That was a big giveaway for the Fighting Sioux. Smaby in his own end, trying to get rid of it. And they're still not coming out real cleanly, but finally Travis Zajac, and he got popped off the puck by Jeff Likens. Earl tangles up behind the net. TJ Oshie in a four check. He along with Spirko, and now the puck again leaves the rink. Valsky's been really hot. He's gotten himself in a like six goals in the last 10 game, 12 game goal scoring streak. He's just been on fire. Really been doing a good job. He has had a good year all year, though. I mean, he's, he's got himself almost 50 points, 37 games, 48 points, not counting tonight's game. Pretty good. Puck was deflected and left the rink. Throw one thing out for you, Frank. At the end of the game, I'll tell you what, you're going to have seen that Oshie has been on the rink. You're going to see the Pavelski on the rink. Certain guys always show up. They're always seen to be, you know, you remember the games, and you know what? Who was a factor in that game? Those two guys are big time players. Jonathan Taves in on a four check, forces the turnover now, and this shot wide of the target. Brian Duncan. And here comes Jodry. 
From center, it's thrown in off the back of the North Dakota net. Trorney, and that pass, handcuffed uh, Taves, hit his, hit his skates and went up the rink. Foot cuffed him, I think, Frank. Now Gilbert, quick outlet pass. The Badgers come out cleanly, right side. McMurchy in the corner, nearly took it away. And still not real clean, but Duncan gets it out of the zone. They'll go off on a chain. Pipe in on the fourth check. He's alone. And then gave it away. Out to center ice. Skilly battles his way in. And that's Ben Street. Now Skilly. Back at the line. Long shot from uh, Davis Drewiski. Ross Carlson now. Ran into Chorney up the middle. That shot hit one of the Wisconsin players in the seat of the pants. <laughs> I was watching Finley on purpose. He's a mountain, but I'll tell you, he got himself so far out of position. He was 10 feet from the blue line. Big hard hit by Matt Olinger in the left wing corner. Now Chorney shooting. That's a foot wide and all the way back out to center. Kyle Ratke will lob it back in. And as Elliott leaves it, the Fighting Sioux complete their line change. Little stick handling at center ice by Skilly. Then it's dumped in, and Parisi has to make a stop. Skilly thought he got violated there. He thought he got tripped. Took a look What's at the AR and decided that wasn't worth arguing about. Yeah, the game's intense. Both teams have a lot of pride in their program. Right at center ice here, Skilly. And Marvin, I think, uh, yeah. rightfully so. That was, you know what, it took a perfect two. Three and the nine are hard to see. Given that uh, the game is as close it is as it is, and it was out at center ice, not a scoring chance. Uh, I could see where they might overlook that one. Sometimes what happens is the referee's just kind of making a move up the rink as it looks like you know, he's starting to re refocus on some other aspect of the thing at center ice and maybe just didn't pick that one up. Or it, like you said, Frank decided really not a whole lot of harm where the puck was. As it's shoveled loose, it's grabbed by Perfect. He can't quite get it out. Well, Lakari was uh, about to deliver a punishing hit, only got a piece of it. Here's Lakari again. Wrapped loose by Chorney. Long shot stopped by Parisi. Lee after it. Lakari hitting him. And another big hit. Boy, the batter's hitting in this period. Nice moving over the line by Perfect. A turnaround shot. What a great shot by Lee Marvin. Whoa. That was quite a save, too. Yeah, it was a reaction to 360 pirouette there. Not exactly what you expect from Lee Marvin, but he saw the opportunity. Now Spirko trying to break in, and he was stopped by Likens. And it's thrown down the rink. They'll be icing here. Lee Marvin in his senior year from War Road. That was a, <laughs> as though she is. I thought it was perfect to begin with, Frank. Again, the three and the nine, you called it right. And a nice overhead camera shot, McDonald's shot. And you know what? That was a wonderful kick pad save. You have to be focused. You have to be in the game, because that was out of the out of the bottom of the bag. Zach Jones. And too many bodies in front for that shot to get all the way through. I think that's part of the game that's changed as much as any is the amount of guys that can block shots and how they stack the front of the net the last 10, 15 years. Bigger bodies. Oshie from behind. Puts it right in front of a skate off. Another skate and an in. I think they got two lucky bounces before it landed on Spearco's stick. And he shoveled it in behind Elliott. The Fighting Sioux have the lead for the first time tonight. That was a skate play. That's skate gate there. Here's Oshie coming out of the corner. One, two, and then to him. You know, and I think the size of the zone gave Look at the opportunity to come across the zone because there's another two feet. You get a little separation between the D and the four that's covering, so you can come across. And then you get lucky on OC to be able to come all the way top of the circle. Boy, I tell you, got to have some fortune. And Sue certainly got it there. Ooh, and he just barely got it in behind that post. Did it go all the way over? Oh, indeed. <laughs> Every goal is reviewed, by the way, and the officials are doing a great job of reviewing them on videotape. Large shot here by Cage, and Elliott will 
Grab it and hold on. Spirko, the go-ahead goal in this one at 4-10 of the second. Priceline. DQ trivia question, who holds the WCHA season record for lowest goals against average? We had a look at Brian Elliott, who's the leader right now. A chance now for Dowell, and then he ran into a nice stick check. Uh, Chorney. Chorney's had a nice game so far. Been very aggressive, very rugged. I think Chorney and Lee have both been very good back there. Yes, they have. Oshi brings it in. Ooh, he got spun around. McMurchie with a big hit. Oshi got the first assist on the Spearco goal, the second assist to Travis Zajac. Four minutes and ten seconds on the ninth goal of the year. Rostislav Spirko. You like to see that, don't no, you? No, I love it. I know, and I, I tried it once, and it took me the rest of the period to get my tongue all fixed up in there. <laughs> Badgers got to respond here. They got to come back. They got to go. They got to get going. Yes, my second career will be uh, doing games in uh, Nova Sibirsk or wherever. That's east of the Urals. Yes, that's what I've heard on television several times. Brian Elliott, how good has he been? Well, first in the nation, goals against average at 168. These numbers are just phenomenal. 93% saves percentage, 810 winning percentage. And I'm still racking my brain to figure out who's got that record. I'm, I think it was a Wisconsin goaltender, and I'll go with my all-time favorite, Julian Beretta. Oh, wow. He's my favorite because he was you like the it. first one I ever <laughs> saw in a Badger uniform. Elliott making the save on Chris Porter moving in on the left wing. The DQ trivia question for this afternoon's game, for those of you who are confused and think it's tonight, uh, who holds the WCHA season record for lowest goals against average? Ooh, Coach Bob Peters. How about that? Wow. Former Bemidji coach, now commissioner of the uh, College Hockey America. Yeah, you know. How about that? Bob Peters, his son Stevie played goal too. I, I tell you, it, interesting because uh, Bob Coach of North Dakota in the middle six, I think that was the great run of teams they had with Masterton and uh, I mean, with Artie Miller and, uh, oh gosh, I think, I think Masterton's out in Denver. Uh, oh gosh. It, but they were great though. They were pretty doggone yeah. good club right at that, that time. In for the faceoff, Ryland Kite, who has the second North Dakota goal of this game, tied it at two, late in the first period. The go-ahead goal by Spirko here in the second. Kite back to the line. Long shot, jumps behind the net, bounces right to Matt Watkins, and now the Badgers with a rush up the rink, Burrish right side, and Earl was hauled down. Oh! And they let him play. Did I hear a whistle? Yeah, he did. Hey, that one would be different. Jones got got beat. It's literally got beat. But I agree with you. But the referee didn't call. He got the shot off, but he got he got beat. So the suit come up pretty fortunate. Either that, or he's going to call a penalty. He didn't indicate. I'm not sure. Here it is, right here. Look at this, Earl. Oh, you know what, Doug? You think maybe a, a little I, swimming pool deal? I think so. Because look at watch where that stick is, and it's like now. Oh, now I think I'll go down. I don't. I think it's a good non-call. Well, he's going to have to go because he's going to have to go for uh, roughing back there. Now the question is, will he tack on an extra two? So it's yeah. See, he his yeah. Uh, will he get a diving penalty? That's what I'm saying. All right, right now we only have two minutes up on the scoreboard for each team. Penalty. That was a very. North Dakota. Can we pick up Jamie Verbrugge? North Dakota number six, Zach Jones, two minutes for slashing. Wisconsin number 10, two minutes for unsportsmanlike diving. Uh -huh. Number six, Jones of the Fighting Sioux, two minutes slashing. I think he got that right, Anderson did. I think he did too. I think he's right on the button. He didn't call anything. That was the interesting part. I was watching him. He didn't indicate one or the other, no arm raise. Then he came up with the right conclusion. Here's a long shot. Elliott knocks it down and then has to get some help in a hurry from Engel. Now that's not a good sign for Elliott to leave that puck lying out there. McMurchie fighting Sue with a one goal lead. And a growingly intense semifinal game. 
That was pretty dangerous what you just saw there. Tom Gilbert flinging it across the front of the goal mouth. Almost hit somebody and went in. Icing in the other direction. The face off back in fighting Sioux territory. There has been an awful lot of icing. I mean, the play has not been tic tac toe. It's been intense. It's been physical. There's been some great shots and some guys are scoring who we never thought would. Especially at North Dakota. Ryan Keeve. Kai, excuse me, he uh, it's his first goal. Klubertans spinning with it, Carlson. And his pass was deflected. That's why it looked uh, rather anemic. Taves gave it away. And it's turned around in a hurry. Jodry winds and shoots. That hits the netting. Standing by with the supervisor of officials. Here is Anthony LaPanta with Greg Shepard. Thank you very much, Frank. And Mr. Shepard, this is a, a unique situation for the WCHA because this year you went to the replay on the goals, but now here at the Final Five, you expand that to include multiple angles. What we do here is we use the NCAA replay as uh, review every goal. Uh, before they start play, we have to okay it. Uh, we go to uh, all, any infraction that occurs within the goalie's privilege area, we can wave off and we can review that. Uh, we have the high sticking, which is really good here because during the year we've had a few incidents with high sticking where we can't see on the overhead camera. Uh, so we do a little, a lot more with in the final five. Plus the NCAA come out with a new uh, objective now uh, last week as far as uh, players in the crease blocking the goaltender's vision. If they uh, impede uh, the goaltender's vision or impede the goaltender, uh, it's a disallowed goal or it's a whistle on outside. I look back at the regular season. There were a couple of rules that drew a lot of attention. One was the use of the overhead camera, which the question becomes, will you see any chance that that expands next year? And also the checking from behind rule that really seemed to clean things up over the course of the year. Well, first with the uh, cameras, uh, we're going to be looking into and talking to the coaches in Florida about getting another camera, another angle because of the overhead is, is great, but yet we'd like another angle for the high sticks. And the checking from behind, uh, the referees have done an excellent job of staying with it from the beginning to the end. You know, last year we had, uh, you know, I'm not going to name numbers, but uh, we've, we've had, uh, we've probably tripled or more our checking from behinds. And uh, the coaches are all in favor of it, and everybody's in favor as long as we get it out of the game. Thanks very much, Greg. Very welcome. Greg Shepard. Frank? Anthony, thanks very much for tracking him down. <laughs> A couple of other. I think that uh, shirt had something to do with it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Was that Kelly Green or Lime Green? A couple of other interesting things oh, rule-wise. We'll tell you about it in a moment here on FSN. Two other wrinkles in this tournament. One of them on purpose. The NCAA just recently said that a goaltender, if a player has his skate in the crease and screens the goaltender, there doesn't have to be physical contact, but they can even screen him. Here's a chance for Pavelski then there will be no goal allowed. And here's another chance on a backhand, and it misses the net. That was Robbie Earl who puts it in the crease, and suddenly Jordan Parisi is very busy. Great rush up the rink by Robbie Earl, Pavelski, and Burrish. They made some plays, and Pavelski hit Earl on the weak side in the first part, and then they came back with a combination where Earl's all alone in front, came in with the puck through a backhand. This is after the great rush. Now he comes in and gets a little backhand. Parisi makes a save. Right before that, Earl had a chance as well. So this line came forward with a really great rush, best rush of the game. I thought he got it, but he, I guess he held his ground. And Earl couldn't quite get it around there. Charney from behind the net. Now it's Taves who battles to get it ahead. He gets some help from Duncan. Duncan who fires, he hit the post. Another clear bell ringer. This was a little higher in nature and a shallow angle shot by Porter. Hand on it. From center, Charney throwing it in. The fighting Sue come up the ring quickly. They create scoring chances in a hurry. You gotta be ready for it. Perfect misses on his chest. <laughs> Thank goodness. Gilbert puts it in front. That's off a of skate. With the skate of uh, Brian Lee. And uh, pass misfires. That has to be the tenth icing by the Sioux. Here it is. Here, this Duncan's having a pretty good day. He's going to put it right off the pipe here. Boing. Elliot's been uh, almost dented again. Nice overhead camera here. 
Duncan Taves, Porter, that line has been good. Kipe has, uh, Doug, as you've mentioned, has contributed some. And of course, the Spirko Zajac Oshi line, dynamic. The top three have all been productive. You know, Kipe had a chance for a goal about two weeks ago playing Michigan Tech. He had a penalty shot. Well, he's 0 for 57, and he didn't <laughs> score the penalty shot. So he comes in here and gets a big one for the Sioux. Dowell from the faceoff, shoots high and way wide. And it bounds back to center ice where Likens will throw it in. Badgers have had some chances down there. A little difficulty finishing from my point of view, do you think? Yeah, when they do, they had their they had their best guys, you know, the most productive guys with the puck, but uh, Earl was foiled on, on two occasions. Klubertan's shot goes wide after a nice setup by Likens and the scramble in front. Very nice fighting Sioux coverage in front of Jordan Parisi, and here's Spirko behind his own net. As we come up on the halfway point of regulation play. The Wisconsin Badgers had the first two goals of this game. The Fighting Sioux answered with the next three. They have the three to two lead. And had that lead at 24 minutes and 10 seconds of the game. And when they made back in November, the Fighting Sioux got three goals the whole night. There'll be a penalty here. Well, Miller is taken down. And actually spun around. And it'll be Likens, I think. Competitive guy here. A lot of juices go, but Marvin gives pass up here, and Miller gets spun around. Mm. It was by Likens, too. Got mm. it inside. And I tell you what, he did a little acrobat, too. I think that one is the same as the other deal down at the other yeah, end. Yeah, he said pirouette. That was uh, pretty good numbers at the Olympics there. Yeah, I, I think they got job in that one. Likens. And it'll be the third power play of the game for the Fighting Sioux. 10-16 the time. There, and now there, here. Yeah. Uh, we evened up here. See, one of the problems that happened for Anderson, he was a long way away from the from Likens. In other words, he was at the far blue line, so he doesn't necessarily get the better angle. Right there, he's almost in the middle of the ice. Easy call. Penalty coming up here on the Sioux. That was Ratke, I believe. Will be at even strength for a minute and 50 seconds. Far side, you see a little right there. Well, actually, you know what? <coughs> you, know, you can call it an even up if you want, but that's a legitimate. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, yeah, just and then I called it even up. It wasn't a uh, move the marble. Yeah, to marble. It was a legitimate even up. All right. Ranking, As previously mentioned, a minute 50 seconds of four on four. And the Badgers in their own. Oh, Likens. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, angle trouble there. Angle's cool customer, but didn't look very cool there. Elliott, tough save. You know what's been really absent in the game is Tommy Gilbert. Now, he's an all-league player, first first team, and he hasn't been seen I can, for whatever reason. There he is, back to get the puck. Couple of looks. And Earl got dumped. Yeah, there's too many, too many people crying, not enough people moving. <laughs> Is everybody gonna stop? Are you gonna call that? Well, no, I'm not. Play on. Good. Angle gets it in, it comes dribbling towards Parisi. There's another player that uh, we haven't seen anything of. I know, Doug, last weekend you called me to task. Who's this, this now? Drew Stafford. Oh, he's not here. He is uh, injured and not dressing, the leading scorer for the Fighting Sioux. Um, and we are remiss in going a half a game without mentioning that the leading scorer wasn't playing. Oh, uh, you're right, you're right. I guess it's... Uh, he got hurt Friday, I believe, of North Dakota against Mankato. So he would played roughly half of the three, half of one game out of that three-game series. Uh, you know, and he's missed a shorthanded goal. He's got about a half a dozen, five or six. And now Skilly to center. Trying to make a move. Tried to take the D and the puck into the net. And then they will cover up and will hold on as Zach Jones held his ground quite nicely. Our cast clay game reset here in the middle of the second period. Fighting Sioux had two in the first, 55 seconds apart. Pavelski and Brandon scored the Badger goals, and Spirko 
as the go-ahead tally in this one. That's off the base of the net. Likens out now in a very short period of time. Radke will be out. So very short power plays, and both schools will be over. Seven and a half to go, second period. And did they get a piece of it? Apparently not, icing. Let's talk about Drew Stafford. Go right ahead. I think it's a very good topic. Well, you know, I, he's, he's such a big guy. He started out the season, you know, with all these young kids playing. He was one of the veteran guys. He got off to a really nice start, real consistent. I think he has 23 goals. So what's going on here? Porter takes his spot. He's a six, seven goal guy. Jonathan Tate was just red hot. Falls a little bit flat because he doesn't have the big guy getting the puck to him. So you lose the finisher and you lose the guy who was making Taves score some goals as well. So that's a big, big loss. But they anticipate he'll be ready for the NCAAs. So then all you have to do is just have Ryland Kipe step up and get his first. Yeah, that's right. Or Ryland Duncan. You know, he he popped in. Duncan one. got his 12th, though. That's yeah. not a bad number. But yeah, I guess not. Is it, Stafford, huh? you're right. Stafford, you're right. 23 goals this year, 44 points. The other guy out of the lineup of significance. For Wisconsin on this time, uh, Joe uh, Pascula, 34 game played, uh, very regular softball play at the D. Yep. Elliott at the side of the net. Dowell couldn't get to it. Well, stepped up nicely. That was Watkins. Watkins has been hungry tonight too. His feet have been moving. You know, I talked to T.J. Oshie before the game. I walked up and, and I said, "Give me, some, you know, oh, oh, oh. Oh, what a crushing, crushing check by Jake Dowell." Woo. I'll finish the thing on here in a second on Watkins. Yeah, that's where that's one of you wonder if there's any oxygen left in the lungs after you've been <laughs> hit like that one. It's a deflator, not an inflator. Angle. And he got rattled pretty good on the check by Kipe. Icing once again. Well quickly OC. Oh, she says it's just, just what I'm gonna talk about. Oh, McDowell will just punish Torney. Taylor oh. Torney just gets gets sent back to Hastings, is what he did. Oh, oh, there's no room behind that net. That's where the 11-footer, he came a factor. I would like to have had a picture from the other side to see exactly how big his eyes got when he picked them up. <laughs> I'm going to get the thing in here. So, oh, she says Watkins. I said, who's the unsung hero? Who's, you know what? Matt Watkins, every day he works his butt off, and he's really been a factor. Not many goals scored, so nice to hear that from Teammate, we got that out front. You good. worked hard on that one. Sir. Good. I, yeah, I know. A lot of people are falling asleep right now. Oh, not in this game. It's too good. No. <laughs> First, nice pass. Kowalski, he drew a crowd and got a bump, and now another check. Very tenacious checking as well by the Fighting Sioux, but it might cost him here. Did we have an interference? Go, he says. <laughs> <laughs> Jones, Zach Jones, I think is the culprit. He's not looking like he's a culprit, but I, he's a feisty guy, highly competitive. His brother played here last year. Bigger, this guy's a little bit smaller, but he doesn't have a smaller heart. 13.56 and interference. That's called stay with your guy. Yeah. Some people say that's good defense. Others say maybe you stayed a second too long. Boy, big boy, we do have different rules in college hockey now than they do in the NHL. You know, I mean, here we, we would debate that play, but in the NHL, it's not even debatable anymore. No. You get that stick up, gone. You're gone. Badges really need to get a power play. Need to get some momentum. Need to get on the board. Need to show that they're right back in this thing. Good point, Doug. They have not scored since 11.05 of the first period. This is where the Badgers could use a left-handed defense with a little more skill. Gilbert's their, their number one guy in the blue line in the power play. They just don't have a left-hander with that high-level skill. Here's a lead pass. It's deflected. Ross Carlson will go after it. Kluber Tans in the corner. And thrown all the way down the rink. A minute to go on the penalty to Zach Jones. Five minutes left in the second period. A period which has seen only one goal scored. That by Spierko. Here's Gilbert now. He's in the ball game. Gilbert gains his own. Oh, and a big hit up the middle by Perfect. A blast is deflected by Perfect. Oh, oh and no tripping penalty there. Whoa. That was Joe Finley. 
got away with one. I don't know if he got away with one, but he sure did it. Here is Burris putting it in front. And Burris again now wrapped up by Finley. Burris playing it all the way around. Gilbert, and he, how did that get past him? I glanced away, and the next thing the puck was on its center. I think it jumped over the stick. All of, you know, sometimes it hits a little ice chip. There's chip. some snow down there, a little ice chip. Yeah. And jumped oh, a great pass up the middle. Earl couldn't shoot. And then a great save by Parisi on the shot by Tom Gilbert. Well, they were good, and they also got some luck, the fighting Sioux did. This is the, uh, I think we're going to see the, the no trip call. They, here's the power play moving around. Watch number two. I mean, it, hardly a dive. Uh, <laughs> really? Gilbert with the fire. The save was outside the twine. But I think more importantly for Parisi, he shot, you know, he shut her down. There's a penalty after the fact here, Doug. That's Robbie Earl. I he might have gotten unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. I don't he did so. I'm thinking uh, for something he said rather than he did. And right now the calls Wisconsin are going Wisconsin against the Badger. They are not going Wisconsin's way. Robbie uh, getting a little frustrated. I think he missed a couple of opportunities. Been in, had a couple chances, and there he definitely was tripped. Was a call. That would have been a five on three, which would have been. An enormous break for the Badgers. So sometimes you got to be ref lucky too. All right, the penalty to Jones has just expired. And now the Fighting Sioux on their fourth power play, relatively late in the period here, and a chance to give them a significant cushion. Oh, and oh, uh, Taves nearly put a great move on, but could not get past Davis Drewiski. Say Jack Taves. Zajac again, firing right on, a nice save, and it's back to the blue line. Radke finds Zajac to Taves, back to the line. Boy, Andrew Kozak is up front on this power play. Well, he's got a couple of goals, he's got seven. Zajac out of the corner looking for uh, Kozak. This is a movement power play, they're rotating. Yeah, they're going good too. Zajac down low. Firing and Elliott makes the stop and he covers up before Duncan can get to it. I'll tell you if that would have happened that little extra poke would have in front of the Sioux net it would have been a lot bigger objection to that. So the fighting Sioux go from penalty killing to power play and now with the whistle to bring the first unit out. Nice little rotation here. Shot. Bozak is in front. He's a tough little bugger. But I'll tell you. The Badgers really did get a bad break. Instead of going up 5-4 or even 5-3 short term, they end up with them trying to kill a penalty here. Here's Brian Lee. Got it up along the rail. Zajac, who remains out of the power play to Oshi and out of Chorney at the left point. The right point once again to Lee. And back to the line again. Here's Lee. On the right side, right in front for Oshi, lines it up, and I think Likens deflected it. Pavelski gave it away, but he, and Gail gets help from Klubertans. Boy, you can see the confidence of the Sioux, whether it be their first unit or their second unit. They're in a little different type of uh, power play. The second group did a lot of rotation. This one just kind of moved the puck around, but certainly confident with that biscuit. Yeah, I, they're in a different frame of mind, too. We're at 13 the, uh, now, the Badgers feeling put upon. And the Fighting Sioux feeling like they're in control. A couple of seconds left on this power play. Badgers Lee back in his right own end. And now Earl out of the box. Ties up with Spirko. And two minutes left here in the second period. At center ice. Zajac will dump it in. The top unit will go off on a change except for Spirko. Now Klubert hands, and that's a bad pass. Well, I mean, bad passes that they had in their own end. Klubert hands with his man, and it blocked. The Jodry couldn't get it out. Kept in, and it worked right in front. Here's a shot of the goal from the far corner. Persistent pressure. The inability for the Badgers to get out of the zone. And North Dakota has a two-goal lead. Absolutely classic, Frank, the way you describe that inability of the Badgers to get that puck out of their own end. I think 
Kai got another one. I think this is the way to win. Great offensive rush. Pressure, I should say. Yes, you're right. You got Watkins in there. You got Cozy. You got, I mean, I tell you, Kai, Kai shows up on the day it's most important. Well, actually, Porter was the other forward, but a nice effort. And one of the thoughts that the coaches had from Wisconsin, they're going to have to get the puck out of their end quickly, and they didn't. And wow, within another goal, within less than two minutes at the end of a period, big daggers. He is a sophomore from Wilcox, Saskatchewan, playing it in his 60th game as Parisi makes the save. Oh, there was a bump after the whistle, and Smaby will be lucky if he doesn't go. In his 60th game, the WCHA semifinals, Ryland Kite gets his first two, not one, but two career goals. I think he wants to move the, the Ralph down to St. Paul. <laughs> All right, and then Smaby is not yeah, going. He, he, he is going. Or is he going? Maybe he's not going to go in because there's not enough time. But no, he is going. He's in. Oh, I got 24. I'm sorry. You got it. Scoring for North Dakota is second goal 20. of the season and second of the uh, game. Porter gets the second assist. Two goals, both for the fighting Sioux. But the Badgers are um, on the power play. It's a roughing on Smaby. And spinning. Here's Gilbert playing it to the corner. Pavelski, a look. Earl in the slot. They go back to the corner. And nice back to play. Earl, and he bangs it in. Perfect execution. And as North Dakota scored late in the first period to give themselves a much needed lift, the Wisconsin Badgers do it here in the second. What a nice change of play. I tell you, Gilbert made his first best play of the day where he did a little spin around, threw it back in the zone. That was about 20 seconds earlier. Oh, nice pass to Earl. Earl sets up. He's eyeing it up here pretty good. Oh, look at the whip in that stick, man. He got the whole fork in that one. He just can pitch it right in there. Judry, I believe, was on the other side. Burrish for sure. Earl gets the power play goal. One minute remaining in the period. 20th goal of the season. Less than a minute to go in the period. Huge goal, Frank. Just absolutely huge goal. Number 10, Robbie Earl. Good scrap in the corner. Cave centering pass. Maybe shot it. It was deflected. Pavelski and Burrish get the assist. It's back at the line for Smaby. Taves in the corner. Trying to spin away from the check of Olinger. Now Porter spinning with it. Firing one. Elliott makes the save and it's in the air. A block by Jones. Taves the pass. And then Oshie was going after it. Ran into Olinger. They tried to handcuff the goaltender Elliott. And he barely got in the way of that shot. Six seconds left. There's another shot. Here's a chance for Oshi. And he couldn't jam it in. And Horn brings it in to a fabulously exciting period of hockey. Oh, boy. The Badgers just crawl back in and on the other side, getting a power play goal by Earl. And then come the Sioux. They come right back down the other end. And that battle's not over. Elliott had to find ways to make saves in this sequence. And that, pu that puck will slide out. That was only one of them. That took Oshi again right around the net. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Look at that effort, I'll tell you. Here's the second one coming up here. He gets a chance. This one was about a second point three left. You know, Frank, that was an exciting last minute and a half. Penalty Jake Gowell second. gets a penalty at the 20 Dallas minutes mark. 11, Power Dallas play for the Sioux when we start the third Dallas period. That is a significant Dallas. development. Anthony LaPanta will guide us through our second intermission in St. Paul. North Dakota by a goal after two. Welcome back to the XL Energy Center in St. Paul. We're joined by Wisconsin's Robbie Earl, who got a big goal there late in the period for the Badgers. Obviously, you guys are hoping that that can turn things around here into the third. 
Yeah, definitely. That, that goal is huge. I think uh, falling down by two uh, behind North Dakota, it's, it's difficult to come back. And I think uh, getting that goal last minute uh, definitely uh, gave us momentum, hopefully, into the third period. Somewhat of a reversal because in the first period it was North Dakota who scored late. They seem to be able to carry that over into the second period. Yeah, they, we were uh, caught back in our heels, you know, and uh, they're a young team. We didn't expect how hard they were going to come out, and they came out hard. So I think we got to match their intensity, and uh, hopefully the third will be our period. Thanks, Robbie. Thank you. Robbie Earl, his goal has the Badgers down just one. Stay with us. More on our second intermission in a moment. We hoped for and expected intensity. We got it. A three-goal second period. The Fighting Sioux would go up on our great clip by Restaurant Spirto. That was a skate gate there. That thing came out. Oh, she made the play, but it was a lot of luck, too. Okay, here's Cave Kai getting the second goal of his career. Second goal today with Porter getting the assist there. Badgers fight back on the power play. And Earl sinks a Pavelski pass. Burris getting the other assist. Well, most of the goals there, you got to give a big assist on each of them. A lot of hard work. Our Red Baron stats after two periods. Shots on goal 24-18 in favor of North Dakota, as are the scoring chances. The Fighting Sioux will take their fifth power play to the beginning of the third period. North Dakota up by one. They'll have a manpower advantage. Face off in a moment on FSN. Welcome back to the XL Energy Center in downtown St. Paul. 4-3 North Dakota. We're joined by assistant coach Kerry Eads. Your team has done a remarkably good job keeping Wisconsin bottled up in their own zone. Do you sense any adjustments for the third? Well, it's a 20-minute hockey game. Big goal by Earl on their power play at the end of the second. We've got to answer in our power play here the first two minutes of the third. Thanks very much. Thanks, Anthony. Assistant coach Kerry Eads, back upstairs to Frank and Doug. Interesting that he, with a lead, would say that it's a 20-minute hockey game. Uh, a little different perspective. They start this period with the power play, as mentioned. Here, Eads with a great addition to that staff a couple years ago here now. I think it's the second year. Just many good years at Warwood High School. Jake Dowell off two minutes, holding penalty at 20 minutes of the second period. Here's Spirko going after it. Likens got a piece of him. The fighting soon mishandled the puck, shorthanded. Here come the Badgers. Pavelski a drop, and now a shot gets blocked. A beautiful block by Lee. Out to Spierko at center, and then it's wrapped away from him. Bad decisions made at the offensive blue line, blue line by Charney. He stayed in there. And you got a goal lead. You can pull back, take the thrust out of there, get the puck back. I tell you, it got away there. Charney and Lee play catch with the puck back there. They each have four shots on goal, highest among all shooters. And out to center ice now. Brought in by Duncan. And in the scrap in the corner, we'll get a whistle. I said earlier, Frank, I'd say that offensively, Charney, Charney tried to stay in with that puck, but they had bounced out. They had a, the Badgers had a two on one. They had an extra. Then a turnover at the other line. And Brian Lee was slow getting the transition to create a two on one the other way. So it was a, kind of a, 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 a missed opportunity by both teams there. Still a minute on the power play. Here's Duncan. Here, a pass to the corner. Uh, Duncan again. Long shot. Nice save by Elliott. Quick release. Quick release by Andrew Kozak. Well, the Badgers have had a pretty good run coming to the uh, final five, but if you look at their numbers in the second half of each of the last three seasons, you'll see a bit of a sag. In the first half, losses are only three, five, and only two this year, but that balloons in the second half to 10, 9, and then 7. Well, you know a lot of that is, Frank, in my opinion. Non-conference schedule early? Well, not only that, but, you know, they haven't been possessed with that Hobie Baker type forward. You know, that really outstanding forward at the kind of carry. Kowalski has finally hit that, uh, what, he hit the 50 mark? First time since Heatley? So it's right. And, 50, you know, uh, 50, 50 points. points. Yeah, in a year. And, and you need some guys that can make a couple big plates for you. And I think that's been one of the issues. Here's Lee after a loose puck. Not the only one, but the one that should be considered. Because you, a lot of times, you know, the coach do this or this, the guys are dying or whatever. But you know what? You've got to have big-time players making some big-time shots for you. Hagenhardt plays it in. 
And the penalty about to expire. Dowell will be out. The Fighting Sioux took one shot in this last power play. But they have, at the two-minute mark of this period, a oh. one-goal lead. What did you see? <laughs> I saw it. Oh, never mind. Here comes a three-on-two in front of the net, and it's batted away by Torney. <laughs> Long shot, that just misses, and it bounces back towards Zach Parisi, and he will hold on. What I was going to say there, Frank, was Ben Street was coming out, and, excuse me, Ben Street took a pretty good whack down to the corner, got away with it. Nice play by Street, now he stays in front, he's been playing really well. Pretty good job there, big strong kid, going to be a great player in this league. Ooh, for Matt Watkins in for the faceoff against Ben Street. On paper, at least, each team out with its third line. And from behind the net, here's Ratke. Kyle Ratke leads the fighting suit charge. It's tipped into the zone. Porter looking at her, a loose puck in the slot, but it's taken away. And out to center, Ross Carlson will throw it in. To the corner, Jack Skilly goes after it, but oh, it's taken away, and then in the collision, the goal comes loose. Big Skilly, I tell you, he's a big, strong guy, too. He's going to be a player. I like, you know, the future of uh, Street and Skilly are going to be big-time players, big, strong guys that can go to the net. Here's Skilly coming to Finley, walking in. Uh, made a good effort to go back to the net. He was coming in on Watkins, bigger and stronger than Watkins, forced his way right in there. Reese's not a real big guy, either. He got bumped around in there. Skilly, one of three Madison natives in the UW lineup. Dad played there many years ago. I know the coaching staff is real high on him. He's a big, strong kid. Knows the game well. Good feel for it. Likens got it in. Maybe gets it out to center ice. It's tipped by Taves, and now they play it in. Well, I'm not sure. That was a breakout pass, I think. That was Robbie Earl down in the corner. Here comes Earl again. He hits the line one on three, dropped it back, or maybe it was stripped of the puck. I'm not sure. But Duncan got it ahead. And the offside whistle at the Wisconsin line. There is an issue with uh, Earl that's that one-on-one -on -one play. And there you saw when you're down a goal, you don't want to have to turn the puck over at the offensive blue line. You want to get it down in deep. Maybe something happens. you got to get out of the one-on-one -on -one type play. Whoop. Earl hobbles off. That's not good news for the Badgers. He's, he's stretching, so I'm guessing that might be a muscle cramp or a Charlie horse of some sort. L.A. I think you're going to see him back. Oh, yeah, he'll be back. Out to center ice, where it is dumped in by Kyle Kluberchance. Comes right back up the middle now. Zajac, Spierko, lines up a shot. Bouncing puck, bounced away from Zajac. He plays it behind the net. Dowell has to react in a hurry. Now to center, where it is thrown high in the air by Jodry. Pass, backhand, blind centering pass, taken away by Zajac. Gains the zone, Likens watching him. He moves to the net, a backhand by Taves. How did he sense a scoring opportunity out of that? Oh, and a big hit by Finley. That was nearly from behind. Dowell brings it in. And he's stripped of the puck as he moves towards the net, which once again comes loose. I like the fact that Reese was just going to push that puck off, keep the play going. But the net went off. A 4 3 lead for North Dakota. Menards is the place where you'll always save big money on quality products for your home. Ease away the day's tension in a new Aqualux Whirlpool. The six-jet Diana model is only $289. Right now, all in-stock Delta bath faucets are on sale. Featuring this two-handle bath faucet, $99.99. Or this matching single-handle tub and shower faucet for $143. Robbie Earl spun back to action. He is just back now from the tunnel there where he did a little stretching. And if he had a cramp or a Charlie Orsi, he, he worked a little kink out of the muscle. He's back. And not even meeting ice. Ratke plays it behind the net. Finley tried to knock it around, but couldn't. And back at the line, here's Clivertance to play it in. Ratke. And then off the glass, but not out of the zone, which is bigger. Doug, you mentioned that earlier, and I, it was a great catch on your part. We're playing with NHL blue lines here, an NHL offensive zone. They're two feet bigger. Yeah, and it causes some more coverage problems. 
you don't get as much help from the high side wingers and your D have to get down a little bit deeper. I mean, just, it's a, it's a fun thing. It's, I mean, that was one of the ways they could create more offensive opportunities was to make the zone bigger so defense had to cover more area. Little tough for a college team to make that transition in a playoff game. Yeah, it is, but I think after a couple games, though, when they look at tape and see what happened last night with UMD, how they were able to roll up top of the circles against a good St. Cloud defense that maybe stood a little still, but still, they were able to do some things with their speed, top of the circles, out of the corners. Big check thrown out at center ice by Smaby. The fighting Sioux back to get it. Zach Jones there. Early part of the third period here. And as it was knocked down out of the air, then dumped right back in. We have for uh, several years now known North Dakota to be a very good offensive-minded team. But Doug, to my untrained eye here, they're doing something defensively to frustrate Wisconsin, and I, I can't pick it up. But part of it is their forwards are putting an awful lot of pressure on the D from Wisconsin so they can't get back out. Now watch, they're also, the forwards are coming back. They're getting first action of the puck. Nice break out there. So they're not spending a lot of time in their end because they're able to make that first pass. Second pass here doesn't uh, connect. But what about the focus of the Fighting Sioux going against these highly regarded Badgers and the NCAAs coming up? We asked Jordan Parisi, the goaltender. We are very confident. And uh, in the last couple of weekends, we, we've shown that we can, we can play pretty top-notch hockey. And, uh, you know, we're, we're just taking this one game at a time. And, and right now we're at, the, we're at the Final Five, and that's all we're really concerned about. And, and to even uh, be more precise than that, we, we're just playing one game. And we're just playing against Wisconsin. That's the only thing that we're concerned about right now. You know, to a lot of you, that may sound a little cliche-ish, but once these guys have been to this tournament and, and feel and experience the intensity, you can't look past this tournament. No, it's one game at a time situation. Oh! I'll tell you one thing I, I liked about Hextall's interview with the in the uh, conference call middle week. Just talking about this game. Wasn't talking about any other game. That's where the right. leadership comes in. They have so much pride in their program. They'll take every little piece that comes along. You know, last night was a situation where the team that lost was going to have no chance of um, advancing to the NCAAs. And that turned out to be Minnesota Duluth. St. Cloud, on the other hand, has to win all three if they're going to make it to the national tournament. Today, this afternoon, that's not the situation. Both Wisconsin and North Dakota are uh, assured of being in by all numbers and rankings and computers and all. They'll be in. Minnesota as well. Tonight, St. Cloud will have to fight for its life. Which brings us to Bud Light. What's on tap? The remainder of the final five schedules. St. Cloud State, Minnesota, the second semifinal game, 7.30 tonight on FSN. And then tomorrow, the third place game. We'll be glad to bring that one to you. 2.30 Central Time in the championship game from the Excel Energy Center at 7.30. One observation we talked about in the pregame show about Wisconsin to create offense. They got three. That's usually pretty good. North Dakota got to control your aggressiveness, and they maybe lost his composure, cost him a goal. And I think that's one of the ways the Badgers can get If they could put a little pressure in the offensive zone against Finley or a couple of those D, let them draw a penalty, they'd have a chance to get back in the game on the power play. Matt Watkins there tried to throw it in. Ooh, he got a little stick from the Wisconsin bench from Jack Skilly. Tried to throw it in. Did it go in the bench? Yeah, Did he give somebody a shave and a haircut with that? Yeah, but he needs a goal rather than a, a pork chop. Put on the stick. Badgers got to focus entirely on what they need to do here. Start putting that puck in, in the zone. Pass to Dowell. They got popped pretty good by Ratke. Frank, there's another case where you say, what are, what are they doing defensively? They're up, taking away time and space. Ratke was right there on Dowell. Ratke trying to win the battle of that loose puck and got bumped pretty good by Brant. A little agitated out there, both sides. And the cooler head, the team with the cooler heads may win this game. Well, Finley could have had a hitting from behind, or at least checking. He come in there after the whistle blown. A little something right. Nice little battle here with Radke. That's shoulder to shoulder. Right here. Yep. No, it's all right. It wasn't as bad as I thought. Okay. Okay. A little, little scrum going on down there. No We're, penalty. That was a good call. We're more, we are more thrilled to have replays than the officials. <laughs> yeah. 
I think. <laughs> get ourselves straightened out. I thought Finley may be coming a little heavy. He didn't do that. Yes. Jones whacks it to the corner. Taves over to get it. Fighting Sue. Break it to center. Porter on the left side with some speed shooting and a glove catch by Elliott, who has not handled the puck much here in the last, what, five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes? No, it hasn't been. I think the Sioux have lost a little bit of that edge, the forechecking edge. That's only their third shot on goal. We're at seven and a half minutes of the period, but uh, the Badgers have only taken two this period. Nice afternoon crowd here. Expect a big one tonight. There is uh, an aspect of the North Dakota game, the way they carry themselves in championship play, playing like they expect to win, uh, play, whether they've won it in the last year or two or not, they always come in like they know how to, it's a program that knows how to win. Well, That's we what just, I'm trying to say. Yeah, we just said earlier about the conference call, how Hextall was talking about, this is an important game for us. We take every game seriously. I think it's the consistency. They're not in and out. I mean, they're always in. They're always, you know, they always put their leg in the, in the water. They're always got their finger in it. You know, they're going after it all the time. And, and that positive thing. And Hextall's a young kid. He's done, but they've got, you know, you look at the number of guys that come back to their school in the summertime to participate in their hockey camps and get them to finish their school. That's a pride. You know, it's a wonderful thing. Wisconsin has a lot of that themselves. The better programs do. That's a why. How many situations did he just size up right there? Oh, he's Hextall. He's looking he, all over there. He's seeing who's, yep. a, who's out, who's fresh. We've got Earl, he feels comfortable putting his number one line against their number one line at this point. He feels they're the Sioux would handle that. See, the one thing about the defensive forwards, the offensive forwards for the Sioux on this line, they play both ends of the rink. So they can score and they can defend. Earl, the left winger on this line, on his offside, brings it ahead. Oh, and then Parisi had it deflected away as he gave it away. And a scramble now with Burrish behind. Lee pins him there. Quickly, nice play to Klubertans. Uh, that pass by Robbie Earl. And then Pavelski gets pinned hard to the rail and battling to get it out of there. That was Chorney. Pinned his man, got the loose puck, and got it out of there. Well, attitude. As it comes loose at center, Zajac gives chase, but Burrish plays it away. Gave it away to Lee, who brings it in prematurely. Uh, didn't give Zajac a chance to get out of there. Well, the Badgers with a little bit of a flurry and a chance here. Parisi shuts the door. Four to three. A lot of people would have expected a two to one game out of this one. Wisconsin Badgers had a two nothing lead. The Fighting Sioux rallied for a four two lead. The last goal of this game has been scored by Robbie Earl on the power play. And that was late in the second period. Four three is our score. Up the middle, a chance of Parisi out to make the save. Carriages again, and then the loose puck behind him. But it was cleared away by Finley in a hurry. Well, there was Tommy Gilbert's first appearance in this game. He got two shots as he moved into the high slot. Boy, did Parisi. There's a big game play of Parisi and the Sioux are offside as they bring it in. One of the things we talked about Parisi a little bit earlier is that, yeah, his numbers might be a little bit down by minuscule amounts from uh, other people in the conference and in the country, but he's a big gamer. You talk about a challenging goaltender. He came out nicely there. Well, Rad and then got some help. Yeah, he did. Radke came right with him. That was Gilbert coming in there. Tommy Gilbert showing his stuff. But look at how Greasy challenged. He got right out top of that circle. Halfway through the period, Drew Whiskey behind his own net, wraps it around. Now Carlson finds Drew Whiskey again. They bring it in, dumping it in. It was deflected. And Duncan gets it out and all the way down the rink, but Elliott will have to play it. Reaching for it, Olinger. Porter cruises by out front. And finally to Drew Iski again. Porter shuts him down. And again, going down, rattles that puck down the down the rink. This is an issue for the Badgers. They just do not have a lot of offensive talent back on their blue line. And now's the time we the guy could jump up. Off the rail, Skilly, a hard move to the net and banged into Parisi pretty good. Boy, he kind of went by Tony. Where was it, Lee? I, I missed. I'm just kind of one of those two guys. 
It's lead side, but I thought it was Tony that missed it. Zay Jack will dump it in for Spirko to track down. Boy, did Likens give him a whack. Oshie behind the net. Burrish can't pry it loose. Now he does, but the Sioux get it. Zay Jack in the right wing corner. Leedy waiting for it, never came to him. Likens back after the puck. Spirko giving chase, gives him a bump. Earl to the North Dakota line. Whoa. A drop pass. Now Burris shooting, and Parisi makes the save. There's Burris out of the corner. And a move by Olinger that, or by Engel, and the shot goes way wide. Burris got jammed up pretty good by Jones. Earl gets a loose puck. Zajac wraps it away from him. Can't get it out of the zone as Gilbert keeps it in. Smaby and Burris bump. Carlson puts it up for an Earl got spun around. He came up looking for a whistle. A block at the line by Angle. Gilbert a long shot, never reached the net. And then barging in, Dagenhart nearly got play going. Finally, it's whipped out of there by Oshie. We've had a uh, few periods of sustained attack either side in this period, but the Badgers had the best of it right there. Well, they actually saw it where the ring sides came into play there. Gilbert had a chance to make a couple plays, but the forward couldn't get out to him at the offensive blue line. Puck got away from Olinger at the last second, but he recovered in time and then took a hit there from Ryland Kipe. As it slipped in, Kipe with two goals. Duncan has one, and Spirko has one for the uh, Fighting Sioux. There's a play by McMurchy, not a very smart one, and threw the puck out in front. Nobody there could have been a, he knows it's not a very good play. We told you earlier that no national uh, standings at stake here. Here's a look at the pairwise ratings by U.S. College Hockey Online, as you see both Wisconsin at number two and uh, North Dakota there at nine are comfortably in. Remember, 16 will be chosen. Now, out of this, a significant development is that Northern Michigan has a 2-0 lead over Miami yeah. in the second period. And that's one thing Colorado College has to watch very closely. An upset by Northern Michigan by Saint or St. Cloud could knock Colorado College out of the national picture. Well, I tell you, Porter put a couple of checks. He's got two assists, but he's also got about 10 checks here tonight. This afternoon, I can't get it over, Frank. We're always in night game. Lee shooting high. It got deflected right in front by Duncan. That was nearly game. Porter. And that's Brant on him. Brant with a big goal for the Badgers. Taves trying to stick handle it literally in a phone booth. Or I guess that's figuratively. And then the Badgers to relieve pressure. Ice it. Well, a lot of pressure. Every shift shipped it's important. This period, a little bit more of what we expected all game long. But it's a 4-3 North Dakota lead. Our Golden Plump game summary with the Fighting Sioux ahead by a goal. Ryland Kipe has two of their goals. Joel Pavelski, a goal and an assist. North Dakota over five in the power play. The Badgers with only uh, with the only power play goal of this game for either side. Jodry gets it in the zone. Jones in the corner, but he can't get it out. Zajac after it. A block at the line. Again, the extended offensive zone helping keep that play alive. Maybe turned it over and a long shot by Carlson got nowhere. No, he almost didn't get there. Not much on that one. Nice block at the line this time by Josh Engel. And Jones behind the net having a problem there with Jack Skilling. Maybe takes a hit, but not before he unloads the puck. Zay Jack back to get it. And we come up on six minutes left here in regulation play. Skilling. Stick stop by Parisi. And if I could throw another question out to you, Doug, uh, a quick word on strategy, perhaps for the remaining six minutes for each team. Well, let's take uh, the team that's behind. They've got to be aggressive at the offensive blue line. They got to stay in and take a chance or two. Sometimes I'd like to go with a two-on-two. In other words, two guys go, third guy high in the middle, so the D can crash down, and then that centerman where was high can come back and take his spot to see what Coach Ease wants to do. From the other side. Green, you want to keep the puck going ahead. 
Watkins uh, got tripped up, but I think they wisely let play continue as he was way out at center ice. Still, besides all that, the Fighting Sewers still able to get it in the zone. Now Earl brings it right back out, brings it in with Burris. Great save by Parisi as Earl had the goaltender reaching with the pad. And Tony did a nice job of blocking out after the shot was taken. He kept number 10 Earl from going in to get the rebound. A stopwatch, Doug, would tell us that a lot of the play has been inside the North Dakota end in this period, but not a lot of it has been threatening. No, partly because the, the AUW forwards aren't quick enough to come out and create a one-on-one -on -one where they beat somebody that's always a muck job. Taves gains the zone, lost the puck. Likens there to drive it around. It was blocked by Porter. It's still loose. And now quickly they work it to the near side, and Klubertans will drive it in. Parisi leaves it. And this is Joe Finley. And he'll get some help. Zajac. What a neat player he is. Far side Taves, and it's right on. Well, now Coach Eason has kind of strategized, too, how he's going to use his number one line. He'd like to get him into every other shift, I think, to score, because they've got 47 goals. The next closest line's got 29. That would be the street Skelly and Carlson group. So I think you're going to see them getting the majority of the chance here. But one of the problem, one of the difficulties that the red and white have is they just don't have a lot of offense out of their defense. And, and when you don't have that this time of the game, it, it's difficult. Long shot by Finley, got blocked. Zajac hustles to the loose puck, gets there first. Spearco firing away and misses. Jumping on the puck, Taves. I'm sorry, TJ Oshie. Now Zajac. And Spearco will go after it. As it's loose to Tom Gilbert, he uses the glass to get it out. Finley will have to go after a fluttering puck, and Parisi wants to cover up because there's a threat there from Andrew Jodry. Surprise that Radke went down on the right half board to make a play, but then behind him was Finley and a couple of forwards. So the Sioux have been well schooled as far as back. You, know, you back up if one of those defenses stay in. I didn't anticipate they would ever stay in at this time of the game. The Radke saw the loose puck, he banged it back in. Radke's an improved player. I mean, I think he's made an awful lot of strides. So is Jones, since we saw him earlier in the year. A couple of non-calls in this period, but there has not been a penalty whistle. And I don't think we're missing anything because of it. Now, the biggest non-call was one on Earl. Badgers could have gone up 5-3 with a little bit of a 5 for penalty. Wasn't called in the second period. Turn around, get a penalty. And then end up having to play man short. It, it's lobbed high, perfect goes after. Gilbert hammers him pretty good. And then Gilbert back to get the loose puck. Head up, takes a look, Burrish, he'll drop it back. Earl will carry the mail to center. Goes right side, it's offside. Earl got slowed up a little bit, so did his pass, and then the offside whistle goes. Back in St. Paul in a moment. Time for the American family save of the game. That'd be Parisi, and his defenseman comes in there. That's Ratke. Oh, and it's also Finley. <laughs> one in the front, one in the back, the bookends. Goodbye with a little help from my friends. Three and a half to go, regulation play in a one goal game here. Semi-final action. Second game tonight, we'll have Minnesota and St. Cloud State. Bounces back, nice job, like and save. Parisi sprawled eagle and Still making saves. Likens gets it to the corner for Dowell. And back around. And if I'm a North Dakota fan, I'm concerned about the amount of time they're spending in their own end. Whoops, here they come the other way. Parter shooting off the tip of Elliott's glove. Hit the netting and then back in, but the whistle goes. Porter coming on strong off that off wing. Fired that wrist shot on the skate. Watch, he doesn't stop. He keeps skating. He fires it on the move. Bing, bing. Oh, this is what's tougher for the goaltender when you're striding. Porter's got two assists today. Veteran player, assistant captain, I believe. Certainly one of the leaders on this team anyway. Two assists. Pretty good job. Thunder Bay. Zeka, Spearco, maybe misplayed it. And a scrap, Burrish. Captain Adam Burrish gets it in over the line. Pavelski, right in front for Burrish, and that puck wouldn't come to him. What happened to it? It died on edge. Yes. I'll tell you, not a very good job by the Sioux defenseman there. Stood up, didn't make the play. 
No icing. It's maybe from behind his own net. And Likens, uh, Angle throws it away. Spierko, it hits Angle, and it's right back to Robbie Earl. Earl trying to split the D, and he was pretty much alone going in there and had, didn't have any options. I think he was going to try to draw a pin. I know it's a great play by Robbie Earl. He was going in there hard, hoping oh, somebody would whack him. Yeah, he's coming off, favoring the left leg. Robbie Earl, second time in this game that he's hobbled off the rink. Drewiski is met and checked by Watkins. Perfect goes after it. Kipe is there. And as Cooper Cash tries to pry it free, the Fighting Sioux bought a lot of time. Only a minute 45 to go in regulation. Cooper Cash was in there digging like a dog, trying to bury a bone. Earl makes a good play. He just tries to right to the middle. He just can take whatever comes. And I'll tell you, the long arms, this baby made that possible. Brian Lee was coming back on the weak side. But that uh, 20 foot reach. Were you able to tell on Robbie Earl? Do you think he re aggravated whatever that muscle thing was? I think it partly went from his leg to his head back to his leg. I think he was disappointed that he couldn't get through there. Leg to his head to his leg. Huh? Yeah, I think it went all the way up, come back down the other side. I'm thinking he could probably play here. Jodry and the draw to the fighting Sioux. Porter after it. Long cross ring pass. And a nice play by Chorney. Jodry getting some pressure from Porter. Played ahead by Kluber Tans. And once again, a puck may have jumped over the boards out of play. T.O. I would think right now. I think so. Out at center, yeah, out at center ice. Yeah, yeah. you have to. There's not much time left. And he may not pull his goalie here, but he's got to go over what he wants to do. He's got, got to get fresh bodies. T.O. I think it was Burst that couldn't quite get his stick on the puck in the middle of the zone here just about two shifts ago. Just the difference of a two or three inches. As it dribbles to the corner, Schmabe will go after it. Whoa, oh, that one oh. hit a skate, and it comes right up in the backhand by Jurisky, just misses. Another one deflected by Jurisky. On a shot that Parisi never saw, hits the glass. Burris will wrap around, try won't go. And look at Parisi, he's got skate to skate, goal to goal, and he makes a big save there. With less than a minute to play. And all of this with Elliott still in goal. Zajac coming up ice. He's got a man in front of Spierko, and he elects to eat the puck for a while and run the clock down some. But here's Drew Whiskey, who had just two great chances. Now Earl to Pavelski. To the North Dakota line, they dump it in. And now finally Elliott heads to the bench. Porter behind the net, drives it around, and takes a Wisconsin hop to the line. Now Cooper can. Gilbert with the extra skater and a bid to tie. And Clifford Cans had to go off the toe of his stick. Centering pass taken away. Fighting Sue can't get it out. Gilbert a shot. That hit Lee in front. Perfect. He was knocked down and couldn't get it out. Likens getting loose. <laughs> they put it right in front. That was intercepted by Lee, who just barely gets it out of his own. And that will give North Dakota the victory. Holy smoke. What a finish. They poured it on, and the Fighting Sioux weathered the storm. What an effort by the Badgers. A chance after chance. And who stands the tallest? One of the shortest guys. That's Barisi. Look at this. That one. He could have been on a kneeler at church for that one, for all that matters. I mean, this is hockey, folks. <laughs> Oh, that was the last time Robbie Earl was going to be in. He left over the bench. Oh, my goodness. Idea. It's heartbreaking here for your Badger. you got to feel good about your goaltender if you're wearing green and white. Well, the Fighting Sioux will advance to the championship game of the Final Four Five format for the seventh time. Boy, they weathered a late minute storm there and a pretty good storm throughout the third period. 
But credit them for spotting Wisconsin a two-goal lead, rallying to take a two-goal lead of their own before they hang on to win by one. Our Kellogg's player of the game, Ryan Kite. He's got to get a bigger grin than that, I would think, before the In night the is over. <laughs> They've got to give him his first and second puck of his career. That's right. Great timing for uh, Kipe, the sophomore who gets, as Doug mentioned, his first two career goals. And this will also be our target goal of the game. Shall we give him two? Yeah, let's. Oh, nice wrister. How come he hasn't scored more? Look at that. Let the boy shoot more. That yeah, that second come was, on, Hicks. Don't let him fire the puck. He sure got lucky on the first one, but the second one was a pretty good sniper's shot. Four to three. The Fighting Sioux win this first semifinal game. We'll set the stage for tonight in a moment. That's it from the Excel Energy Center this afternoon. Our final score, North Dakota 4, Wisconsin 3. Game 2 of the semifinal action comes your way this evening as Minnesota battles St. Cloud State. Our coverage begins at 7 o'clock Central Time. Coming up next on FSN North, it's CCHA Super 6 Hockey Action. For Doug Woog and Anthony LaPanta, I'm Frank Mazzocco. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you in a couple of hours. Ferguson.